Hey there, everyone. Welcome back to Utility Sports. In today's video, we're taking a look at the fresh, brand new AP Top 25 poll with the top 25 teams from college football. Austin spent so much time yesterday watching every single game around the nation, really checking in with each school and seeing what was going on. So let's get into our top 25 rankings now uh, from the AP, our reactions to them. Austin, 25, we have the Texas Longhorns in a nail biter yesterday, did not pull out the game against Oklahoma. Spencer Rattler actually got benched in that game. Break down the key storylines from that matchup. Yeah, and you had alluded to it. It is Spencer Rattler getting benched for Caleb Williams. Caleb Williams ended up coming in with an 18-point deficit in his in his way, and it was super impressive how composed he was considering he didn't play a single game last year in high school for his senior year. This is a true freshman walking into this game in one of the biggest rivalries in all of college football, and he ends up pulling out the win. Very, very impressive how composed he was. Spencer Rattler obviously was very upset about being benched in that game, but that ended up being the key for them. The quarterback change really sparked a big, big comeback for the Oklahoma Sooners. Spencer Rattler becomes a big name to watch either in the transfer portal or for our NFL fans, a name to watch for the draft. Presumed number one overall pick to start the year. Seems like he's falling now, could maybe even slide past round one. Of course, the physical traits are still there, but this is a massive red flag for some NFL organizations. Moving on now um, up the list a little bit, we have San Diego State at 24, SMU at 23, uh, and then also uh, 22 NC State and 21 Texas A&M pulled off a massive upset against previously number one ranked Alabama Austin. The Crimson Tide goes down to Texas A&M. DeMarvin Lill had a big game. Break down really what you all saw and uh, heard from that Texas A&M matchup. Yeah, that was a surprising win, obviously, for Texas A&M, considering they dropped two games that maybe they felt they shouldn't have earlier in the season. However, Texas A&M remained composed. They end up coming up to 21 after that huge win against Alabama, but I'm a little shocked it's not higher. I understand that they had the two key losses early on, but it is not often that you are able to beat a Nick Saban-led squad in the regular season. So impressive win for Texas A&M. I am shocked that they aren't a little higher than 21, especially since they beat the number one team in the country. Right. Being a number one ranked team usually will move you up a little bit higher. We'll see if any continued success there for Texas A&M will help propel the Aggies higher up in future AP top 25 polls. Now looking 20 to 16 here, we have Florida, Brigham Young University, Arizona State, Arkansas, and Wake Forest. I think that there's two real key teams to talk about in this collection, Austin. One is Brigham Young University, BYU. They ended up losing to Boise State in an upset. Break down what you saw from that game and why Brigham Young uh, slides to 19 here. Yeah, Boise State jumped on them early and they really weren't able to recover. BYU, definitely a shocker. I, I did not think that Boise State was going to win that game. I really didn't give them much of a chance. However, they really proved me wrong in that one. BYU slides all the way to 19, so they lose nine spots from the previous poll. Very, very surprising. Another game I want to talk about was the Arkansas Ole Miss game. Huge implications in that SEC. Arkansas narrowly loses. They end up tying the game uh, with, with time ex or nearly tying the game as time expires, but they ended up opting to try to go for the win instead of just forcing the overtime. They go for the two point conversion on a rollout, missed a target in the end zone. Very, very tough and heartbreaking loss for Arkansas, a team that's been so good and so underappreciated so far this season. Right. That is the risk you run when you try and go for the win at the buzzer like that. They ended up paying the risk more than the reward there, falling to 17th now in the AP Top 25, which brings us now into the top 15. We got Coastal Carolina, Notre Dame, Ole Miss, you had just talked about in their win over Arkansas, Oklahoma State, and then Kentucky, which has been a consistent riser throughout this AP Top 25 process. Last week, they were 16th. Now they jump up to 11. There's a lot of viewers in our comments that think that Kentucky thinks that Kentucky should be a top 10 ranked school at this point with their program, how they're performing this year. Do you feel the same way, Austin, about Kentucky and break down their season uh, up to this point? Yeah, they've been really, really impressive. They've gotten some key wins, especially against LSU, a, a team that's you know a little, little bit in shambles right now and look like a total shell of themselves from that 2019 season. However, LSU still is a decent team and they were able to handily beat them at home. Uh, Kentucky did a nice job defending their home turf against the Tigers, and that was a game that I felt they controlled the entire way through, and they were super impressive. I think a couple more marquee wins for them really shoot them into that even close to top five discussion if they keep on the, on the role that they've been on. 
right? Kentucky, historically known as a basketball program, their football program has really come around in recent years. They've produced some draft prospects. This year is the same for that. And also at 14, Austin, Notre Dame, the Fighting Irish are here. Of course, Kyle Hamilton's one of the key names to watch for that program. He's going to be a top 10 pick in this year's NFL draft. However, it just seems like they really aren't winning games with as much cushion as they would like to. Are they a real contender uh, and a real dangerous team at this point? Or are they more of a pretender? Yeah, I think this is kind of where they're going to hover around. They just don't have that firepower that you need to be in that top 10. Notre Dame has, is a little bit of a pretender this year. They had a close and narrow win against Virginia Tech, a game that they did not look super impressive in. And that's why you see the ranking there. They don't even move after the win. I just feel the teams above them are definitely definitely better, more consistent than they've been this so far this season. So Notre Dame, a little bit of pretenders there. Right, we see the Fighting Irish hovering at 14. Moving into the top 10 now, we have Michigan State, the Spartans. Then we have the Oregon Ducks, followed by the Michigan Wolverines. Penn State, who I think is really the key team to talk about here in this grouping, and also Ohio State, Austin. Talk a little bit about the Nittany Lions. They had a massive matchup against number three ranked Iowa this past week. Of course, Iowa got a little bit of a bump as well from this matchup. Yeah, Penn State unfortunately ends up losing a very close game. Unfortunately, uh, Sean Clifford gets hurt in that game, and that very much was the difference. Penn State could not move the ball when Clifford was out of the game. They punted several, several drives in a row. I think it even got up to seven consecutive times in that game. Penn State is a very good program. If Clifford doesn't get hurt, I think that's very possible that they win that game. I think that truly was the difference. But huge win for Iowa. A little more on them to come. A couple of the other teams I want to talk about. Michigan State getting the big win over Rutgers, 31-13. to Once again, this Michigan State school has not been this high in quite some time. They've been able to be a consistent team so far this year. They've proven to beat their, their conference play. Uh, very, very impressive starts so far for the Spartans. And another team that we should kind of talk about that beat another conference squad was Michigan. They matched up against Nebraska this week, and they were able to handle the Huskers pretty well. So now they are 6-0 and at that number eight spot. Harbaugh has this team coached up very, very well. Is it possible that they could sneak into that college football playoff? I think that's yet to come. They need, they need a couple more wins for me to really consider them in that top five. Right. A key interesting thing to note here about the 10 through six range is four of these five programs come from the Big Ten. The Big Ten has produced great football teams at this point of the season, uh, and we continue to expect that throughout the year. Penn State, of course, in that loss to Iowa, had a 17 to seven lead, ended up blowing it uh, with the Clifford injury you had mentioned as well, really hindered their ability to really move the football and ended up losing 23 to 20 in a close one. Uh, and that's going to be one of those games we look back on at the end of the year and say, that may be really dictated who's going to be in the college football playoffs at the end of the day. Moving in now to the top five here, we have Alabama after their big time loss that we have already prefaced a little bit. Then the Oklahoma Sooners, we've got the Cincinnati Bearcats, Iowa Hawkeyes at number two, and then the Georgia Bulldogs at number one, Austin. Start us off with Alabama. Do they have a chance to still make it back into the college football playoffs after that devastating loss to Texas A&M? You know, for me, I think that is very possible and actually pretty likely that they make it into that college football playoff discussion. If you look at these top teams, this is the most wide open college football has been towards the top of the rankings in a very, very long time. Only one seems to be a lock for me in this college football playoff thus far of the top four teams. I believe that's Georgia. Georgia has been consistent. Even with JT Daniels out, Stenson Bennett has been very, very consistent for them. And plus, it doesn't hurt that they have two five-star running backs to pound the ball with. They are consistent across the board. Their defense is elite. This is one of the scariest defenses we've seen in the last five years. So Georgia is a team that I would not want to mess with. But getting back to Alabama, this is very, very well going to be a college football playoff team. They're just so good. They're so consistent. And I see it being possible that Oklahoma loses a game down the stretch that would really allow Alabama to, to propel themselves into that top four. Of course, that quarterback position is going to be a key thing to monitor for the Sooners. I also want to touch briefly on Cincinnati, Austin. You've been raving about this program since the start of the year. Uh, before college football really got underway, said there's a lot of talent on this team. Uh, a lot of guys who we could see even go day one of the NFL draft. Talk about Cincinnati season so far, and do you expect the winning to continue? You know, honestly, a lot of people aren't familiar with the with the Bearcat program, but they've been able to consistently develop 
very good players at this level and eventually go on to the next level. We've seen some star players in the NFL come from Cincinnati even. This is a consistent program that we know will be able to produce NFL players. But the question always has been, can they get that next level? Do they have the recruiting power to get to that next level? And they never have a top tier recruiting class ever, but they've just done such a nice job developing talent uh, of guys that have been maybe overlooked in, in those initial rankings out of high school. In Cincinnati, I am shocked to actually see them at this point in the season at the number three spot. Um, I thought they were going to be in that top 10 area, for sure top eight. But, you know, the fact that they're three really, really shows how they've done such a nice job this season. Desmond Ritter, a big reason why that dual threat quarterback and that defense is looking very, very scary as well. So the Bearcats at number three, it's super impressive uh, how far they've come as a program. Most definitely Cincinnati's built a wonderful program at this point. And to conclude the video, I'm going to put you on the spot a little bit here. What is your expected final matchup for the national championship at this point? Of course, we've only played six games, so there's a lot still that could shift. But at this point, who are you expecting in the college football championship game? I have Georgia and Alabama, the two best teams in the actual country. I believe if Alabama plays Iowa in in a college football setting, that they are going to beat them. Same with Cincinnati. I think those are two nice programs, but a little circumstantial in terms of you know where, where the records sit right now. Iowa or Cincinnati head to head with Alabama. I think I, I take Alabama all day long, but it's going to be Georgia and Alabama. Very possible. It could be a one, four kind of matchup. And I, I definitely see that Alabama and Georgia are, it, it's tough because there's a couple of teams that I like, but Oklahoma hasn't been consistent enough for me, especially defensively to show me that they can be a true contender. Uh, I could see Georgia and Alabama being the two. Right. The big storyline now to monitor throughout the rest of this college football season, does Alabama have enough big wins in them to jump back up into the top four? Does Oklahoma, Iowa, or Cincinnati possibly let it slip? That's going to be the storyline to watch. Hopefully you guys did enjoy today's video. It's a lot of fun going through the AP Top 25. Austin, you do such a great job watching all these teams. Again, hopefully you enjoyed. Like if you did, subscribe if you're new, and we'll catch you guys in the very next Utility Sports video.